I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Jesus said he would return when our days parallel the days of Noah, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Noah, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 6, 1 and 2. Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Who were the sons of God who took wives for themselves of all whom they chose? We find the answer in the book of Job. Job 1.6 now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Job 2.1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. The sons of God in Genesis 6.2 are fallen angels, who married and produced offspring with human women, in order to try and destroy humanity by preventing the Savior Jesus Christ from being born. Genesis 6.4 There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Who were the giants that the daughters of men bore to the sons of God? The giants were half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids known as the Nephilim. Just as in the days of Noah when fallen angels mated with human women and the result was a half-angel, half-human hybrid known as the Nephilim, many end-time scholars today believe Jesus will return when human genome is again being tampered with. Satan and the fallen angels not only corrupted human DNA, but also corrupted all flesh, as we read in Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Are we seeing any signs of genetic tampering in animals today? It's enough to make your skin crawl. The Florida Keys Mosquito Control District approved a plan to release 750 million, quote, non-biting male genetically modified mosquitoes over a two-year period in the Florida Keys starting in early 2021. The Environmental Protection Agency approved the pilot project back in May to test if a genetically modified mosquito is a better alternative to spraying insecticides at a cost of nearly $1 million a year to control the type of mosquito that carries deadly viruses in the Keys, including Zika, Dengue, and yellow fever. A U.S.-owned British-based company called Oxitec created the modified mosquito named OX5034 and describes its project as friendly mosquito technology, explaining that its mosquito has been altered to produce female offspring that die in the larval stage before hatching and growing large enough to bite and spread disease. Oxitec says its program has been successful in places including Brazil, Panama, and the Cayman Islands, but the project is not without contention. Various environmental groups, community members, and national organizations warn the plan could backfire, producing a more resilient hybrid mosquito instead. J.D. Hansen of the Center for Food Safety said in a statement, quote, with all the urgent crises facing our nation and the state of Florida, the COVID-19 pandemic, racial injustice, climate change, the administration has used tax dollars and government resources for a Jurassic Park experiment.
This robo skeeter, if you will, has also been approved to be released in Harris County, Texas next year. So far, close to 234,000 people have signed on a Change.org petition to, quote, tell the EPA no genetically modified mosquitoes. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. This video of a retired police sergeant who was beaten and robbed by thugs in broad daylight has become the new normal in cities across the country. Now, it's no different in Minneapolis, where we went last week to document the chaos, the aftermath of all those riots, the lawlessness, the destruction, all after George Floyd's death. And those who stand up and call for more or better policing, like Minneapolis Police Federation President Bob Kroll, can expect a violent BLM mob to show up at their houses. I'm a black man being terrorized by this prison right here. Don't run now. Don't run now, racist white people. Come on over here with your Blue Lives Madison. Blue Lives ain't shit. And if people in Hugo don't support black people, Hugo, Minnesota. Joining me now is the target of that irate mob, Bob Kroll, Minneapolis Police Federation president. He's also a lieutenant, uh, a lieutenant with the Minneapolis Police Force. Bob, uh, what's your response to that threat and intimidation by that individual running for uh, office in the state and endorsed by the governor? and other Democrat officials. Well, Laurie, it's shameful. And what's truly shameful beyond that is no one in the party here, including the governor, has asked for him to step down and withdraw from the race. Um, they put out a few small retractions that he wish he wouldn't have done that, but they were very minor apologies, if, if you could even call them apologies. And the rest of them are saying, hey, this is our party. It's, it's, this is what you want. And sadly, he's from the east side of St. Paul is where his uh, district is, and that's where I grew up and spent the first 25 years of my life. Now, I was in uh, Minneapolis last week, uh, and I spoke to business owners whose lives were completely destroyed in these riots. Now, these aren't political people. They're just hardworking Americans. And their stores were literally burned to the ground. Watch. Do you do want this. fewer police here or do you want more? We want a more presence of security. There's no backup plan for the police either. They say they want to defend the police. Okay, do you have other plans what you could put into our community? Because I have another store down the street. <laughs> Thursday, 1 p.m., I got robbed in the daylight. The police says all they do is, Laura, is take a report. I have reports after reports. And now the report is going to become like a booklet. You know, it's like a full of reports. Bob, uh, he, like many others, just not getting the help that they need right now from... Uh, authorities. Well, what's your response given the situation in Minneapolis today? Well, the thing is, a year ago, our chief of police asked the mayor and city council for an increase of 400 officers, and they got nothing. And during press conferences, you saw our mayor repeatedly say, "We just didn't have the numbers. We just didn't have the numbers." And it was uh, it was the epitome of failed leadership. Um, if they would have deployed the guards sooner, which they held back on their deployment. A lot of these businesses and, and buildings could have been protected. They did over uh, $500 million worth of damage to, our, to these businesses. There's 1,500 businesses, many of which will not come back. And in, not only we not get the 400 officers, we are down 100 from that. There's rapid retirements. We expect to drop uh, 200. We were hovering around just below 900. We're, we're going to be below 700 the way things are going. 
Now, violent crime is on the rise, uh, Bob, in Democrat-controlled cities across the country, including Minneapolis. Uh, the figures are astounding. Homicides are up 96 percent over last year. Now, the city, as you said, cutting the police budget, reducing the number of officers. What's your message tonight to all the people watching? They've heard a lot of of talk about, uh, you know, how Joe Biden's a great guy, is a great grandfather, and let's stipulate to all of that. But the position of the Democrat Party in general toward police officers, what should people be thinking tonight? They, they have declared war. The, the party has declared war on police in all the major cities. Uh, Minneapolis has it bad, but thank God we're not Portland or Seattle. You look what's going on out there. Um, I just don't understand it. All, all these major cities that have Democrats in charge and have, have had Democrats in charge for decades are the ones that are imploding, and their answer is less police. And Bob, I have to say, okay. after being in Minneapolis and seeing the destruction firsthand, I mean, I actually got in my car and I just cried. Like, I, I couldn't believe this was happening in America. We always know there's going to be injustice. There's going to be crime. There's overwhelmingly great police. Some, you know, not great, just like in humanity. It's not everyone's going to be a perfect person. Some are going to be cr criminals. But Minneapolis? That happened in Minneapolis? It, it, it's just, it took my breath away. And if it drove me to tears, I can't imagine what it's doing to the city. There are a lot of good people in Minneapolis, a lot of great people, hardworking people. That's right. That's right. I, I drove down there uh, after the after the riots finally quelled, and I worked Lake Street for many years as a patrol supervisor and a patrol officer, and it was devastating to see because a lot of those business were strong police supporters, and they're gone and they're not coming back, and it's just it's sad to see because that Minneapolis was a very vibrant city, and it's going to be a long, long road to recovery, and they're headed in the opposite direction. Uh, Depolicing and defunding the police is not the way. Governor Tim Walz not having rescinded his endorsement of that man who came to your home, your personal residence, and was threatening you with your teenage neighbors on the, on the porch there on the front driveway. Uh, what, what has happened to Minnesota? What does the Bible say about lawlessness? To be lawless is to be without any rules or order. Laws are necessary in a sinful world, as we read in 1 Timothy 1, 9, and 10. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. 1 John 3, 4 defines sin as lawlessness. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. When a society ignores the law, lawlessness is the result, and chaos ensues. The time of the judges after Joshua's death was marked by upheaval, oppression, and general disorder, as we read in Judges 17.6. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. God has a purpose for establishing human government, to punish those who do wrong, and to commend those who do right, as we read in 1 Peter 2.14. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme, or to governors, as to those who are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. Rulers are God's appointees to maintain order and promote righteousness in a civil society. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves, as we read in Romans 13.2. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. In other words, lawlessness is condemned in Scripture. On Judgment Day, many will stand before Christ, claiming a connection with Him that exists only in their own minds. They will rehearse their good deeds done in His name, only to hear Jesus declare to them, I never knew you, as we read in Matthew 7, 21-23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, 
Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. At that time, those who practice lawlessness will be cast into the blazing furnace, as we read in Matthew 13, 41, and 42. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those who are covered by the righteousness of Christ will shine like the sun, as we read in Matthew 13, 43. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Christ will have the ultimate victory and will eliminate lawlessness forever. Breaking news charges tonight against a man wanted for stabbing homeless men while they slept. This surveillance picture of the suspect captured on a red line train where one victim was stabbed this past Tuesday. Bryant McCallum now charged with several counts of attempted murder and aggravated battery. A 15-year-old boy is recovering after he was shot while skateboarding. Chicago police say the victim stopped to ask someone if he'd been shot, and that person noticed a wound to his back. He's now in serious condition. So far, no one is in custody. A 73-year-old woman is shot in the chest while letting guests into her home overnight. Another senseless drive-by shooting on the city's west side. This time, a mother and her young son, both caught in the crossfire, both shot. Breaking news, Chicago police released video of the shooting of a Chicago firefighter's son. The 12-year-old boy was hit in the park. Breaking tonight, the weekend starting off with several people shot inside a barber shop in Ukrainian Village just after 2.30. Two men opened fire. They began firing. A 52-year-old woman and two men were shot. They are all expected to survive. The gunman got away. Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. The rate of gun violence in Philadelphia is rising at a record pace. At least seven people were shot in broad daylight yesterday, among them, a 12-year-old boy. That 12-year-old is expected to recover. However, an 18-year-old is now among the 276 people who have been shot and killed in the city so far this year. The 18-year-old was shot twice in the head and was pronounced dead at Temple Hospital. A 15-year-old was also shot. They were shot in the leg and listed in stable condition. Later in the afternoon, another 15-year-old was shot in the shoulder. So far this year, 276 people have been killed by gunfire in the city. That's 30% more than this time last year. And Philadelphia police say that an argument ended in the shooting of an 18-year-old woman at Penn's Landing. The violence continued tonight. In Olney, a 28-year-old man was shot and killed while sitting in a car. Breaking news, three people are shot in West Philadelphia. Police believe the victims may have been caught in the crossfire. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Three people have been shot in North Philadelphia. A man is fighting for his life after he was shot three times in the head in North Philadelphia. In West Palden, police say a 29-year-old man was shot multiple times and killed. Philadelphia police are investigating a deadly shooting. Police say a 34-year-old man was shot in the face. Responding officers rushed him to Temple Hospital. He did not survive. 26-year-old man is fighting for his life after police say he was shot multiple times in Nice Town. A violent night in Philadelphia has police seeking answers. The violence added five murders to the city's record-breaking tally of gun violence this year, including the murder of a man who was shot while walking home from the park with his children. Police say there have been 286 homicides in Philadelphia so far this year, and that's a number the city hasn't seen in over a decade. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. 
Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Breaking overnight, a woman shot and killed in Hunting Park. This happened inside of a home. Police say the 26-year-old victim was found on the second floor with a gunshot wound to her neck. Medics rushed her to the hospital where she later died. Four people were shot around the city overnight. A 25-year-old woman has died after getting shot in the head just after 5 o'clock this morning in the Melrose section of the Bronx. An Uber driver, meantime, is recovering after getting shot late last night in Brooklyn. The driver told police a man on a bicycle opened fire on his car while he was stopped in Coney Island. Neighbors along three blocks in Brooklyn say they feel like they're living in a shooting gallery. Three people have been killed, several others wounded in a recent wave of gun violence there. That includes an innocent bystander who was walking with his wife. People are just trigger happy. Three separate fatal shootings in less than a week in Flatbush, happening within a tight three block radius. The latest you see in this video released by cops mid afternoon Wednesday, a gun fired from inside a silver SUV that police say had no license plates. The hail of bullets here at the corner of Woodruff and Ocean Avenues included those that struck and killed an 18 year old victim identified by police as Malcolm Amide. Knowing that people die in the streets from gunshots, that is crazy. Struck by one of those bullets and wounded is Sam Metcalf, an artist. A GoFundMe page to raise money for the 33-year-old's medical and other expenses. Details how he was walking to a nearby store with his wife to buy toothpaste when he was shot just one block from their apartment. We are told surgery removed a kidney and he remains hospitalized with the bullet lodged in his spine. Metcalf's family and friends have been told by doctors he may not walk again. Somebody has to do something. You know, it's, it's, it's just, just a sad situation. You know, innocent people are getting hurt. This must stop, say neighbors. The summertime surge in gun violence includes a man who was shot to death at the start of last weekend near the same spot. And early Sunday morning, a man was shot and killed one block away near the intersection of Parkside and Ocean. Paul Pinckney was murdered at point blank range as he sat on a park bench. Breaking news, this is out of central Texas in the Austin area. Several police officers have been shot there. This is currently unfolding in the community of Cedar Park. It's just north of Austin. Police telling us three officers shot while responding to a situation with someone apparently barricaded inside a home. Multiple people hurt. This is in San Antonio. After someone opened fire at a flea market, at least five people shot at that location. Now to the latest on gun violence across the city. Yesterday, there were at least 12 shootings across the five boroughs. Five people were shot in two shootings overnight alone in Harlem. In the second shooting in Harlem, a 30-year-old man died just blocks away from that first shooting. Breaking news this morning, a mass shooting in Chicago's Gresham neighborhood leaves six people in the hospital. The six victims, all males, we're standing outside at some type of gathering around 11.30 last night. They believe a car drove by 
and someone inside started shooting four of the victims, the youngest, a 17-year-old, are now in fair condition. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade. Legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Since then, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015, Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. What happens to a nation that kicks God out? Romans 1.18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the Creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. It is evident by looking at society that we are in the third and final judgment on America. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. 
when a nation tells God that they no longer want or need him and actually tell him to go away so they can wallow in their sins, eventually God says, okay. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.